A laser beam can propagate through the atmosphere up to orbital altitudes and accidentally sweep across a space system while pointing in a desired direction or tracking an intended target. If the satellite is illuminated with sufficient intensity, sensors and components may be permanently damaged by the laser. In this video, we will describe the inadvertent illumination hazards that outdoor laser activities can pose to space systems and the efforts being conducted to ensure and promote the safe interoperability between lasers and satellites. But there are no international policies or guidelines in place that laser operators can follow to protect satellites from inadvertent illuminations. So most laser operators do not deconflict their operations with satellites that may be passing overhead. The only protection measures that proactively mitigate against inadvertent illumination hazards to all satellites are those of the U.S. Department of Defense, or DOD. These protection measures are implemented with a formal process known as predictive avoidance that is executed by the Laser Clearinghouse of the U.S. Strategic Command. When conducting a laser test, U.S. DOD lasers are not authorized to fire when a potentially susceptible satellite is predicted to pass within a safety region about the laser beam. Although the Laser Clearinghouse will work with other laser programs, these protection measures are only required by U.S. DOD policy and are therefore only directly applicable to U.S. DOD laser programs. But the U.S. National Science Foundation, or NSF, does require that laser programs receiving NSF funding also participate in the predictive avoidance process. Although the inadvertent illumination risk from U.S. DOD and NSF lasers are mitigated with this predictive avoidance process, many other governments and organizations are actively engaged in the development and use of lasers and space systems. Globally, our modern society has become and is continuing to be increasingly reliant on both laser and space system technologies. Laser technologies are finding numerous beneficial and important uses in entertainment, scientific research, and even financial markets. As well as defense. There are increasing trends of lasers even being used on board spacecraft for Earth science studies and communications. Also in space, we are seeing a boom in the satellite population, primarily due to small satellites being launched in increasingly greater numbers. They are being built and launched more cheaply and are taking on more sophisticated missions than once were only possible with larger and more costly satellites. As orbital space becomes more congested at the same time as lasers become more numerous and more frequently used. Conceivably, it is only a matter of time before a satellite is accidentally illuminated by a laser operating somewhere around the globe. However, it is not how Hollywood depicts it in the movies. Maximum fire Contrary to popular belief, simply illuminating an object with a laser beam does not always cause instantaneous and catastrophic damage. In reality, there's actually a wide range of potential effects. It is possible that there will be no effects at all, or the effects will only be temporary. Permanent damage effects can even be minor and not adversely impact the satellite. 
The effects are actually a complex relationship between the beam characteristics, the distance the beam travels along a slant range path to an object, the propagation losses along that path, the time that the beam illuminates an object, and the susceptibility of the illuminated component or material. If illuminated, certain components on a satellite could potentially be damaged depending on these factors. In general, the most at-risk components are optical sensors, such as imaging cameras. This is due to the extraordinary ability of these sensors to gather light and focus it onto a small spot on the sensor's detector. If illuminated, it is possible that nothing at all will happen to the sensor. It is also possible that the sensor will only temporarily be blinded and could still recover. With a high enough intensity, it is possible that the focused light can heat up the illuminated spot enough to melt the detector material. This will not cause the satellite to explode, but it will destroy pixels on the detector. Even with damaged pixels, it is still possible for a sensor to take images. However, dead pixels will show up as dark regions in an image, as shown by the black line in this example. Note that this is an example of only one type of permanent damage effect. It is also possible that the detector could be damaged enough so that it could no longer take any images. As previously mentioned, the exact effect will depend on a number of factors. The hazards are real, but we need to be realistic about the hazards. Permanent damage can only happen under the right circumstances in order to inadvertently illuminate and potentially damage a space system, a number of coincident events must take place. The beam must be pointed above the horizon. Some beams do simply point upwards straight into the sky. Others are focused onto a target. When focused on a target, a beam must either miss the target or not be entirely blocked by the target in order to propagate up to orbital altitudes. The complex nature of the atmosphere produces fluctuations in the beam size and intensity at orbital altitudes. A satellite must happen to be passing overhead and through the laser beam while the laser is firing. For most satellites with optical sensors, the laser source must be within the field of view of the sensor to damage the imaging detector. But these risks will continue to grow with technology advancements. Given the importance of both laser and space technologies to our modern society, an appropriate balance of protection measures is needed to ensure space system safety without over-regulating laser technologies. Through continued support to the laser and space communities, the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory is leading efforts to better understand and characterize these risks and promote a balanced and practical approach for the continued development of laser technologies while ensuring space system safety. This video was created by the Meditech Corporation for the Satellite Assessment Center at the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory. Support has also been provided by the U.S. High Energy Laser Joint Technology Office. Contracted efforts to help characterize the inadvertent laser illumination risk faced by satellites are being conducted through the teamwork of Meditech Corporation and Ball Aerospace and Technologies Corporation. Thank you.